is up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Dense Pixels Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Brad, joined by my co-hosts, Micah. Hey. And Carrie. What's up? Let's get the elephant out of the room. Um, 12 minutes came out last week. All that the gaming reviewosphere can talk about is 12 minutes, just in turn in, in a variety of different ways. <laughs> um Micah is the only one of us, to my knowledge, that's played it. And it's interesting because I I think it's safe to say that this game was not what anyone was really expecting it to be. Mostly for worse, like normally you say for better or worse, but I think in this case, it's actually mostly not a great thing, but Micah's <laughs> the only one that's played it. So Micah should talk about it. And we will, we will spoiler warn uh, if we're going to go into that territory. So um, I won't go into spoilers because um, I, I haven't gotten too far into it. Okay. Um, but I have put about 200 minutes into 12 <laughs> minutes and um, I enjoy it. It's yeah. uh, okay. it's 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 best played. I, I'm going to assume that it's best played on PC because there's a lot of clicking and dragging mm -hmm. and doing that with a controller is just cumbersome and it, it just doesn't it doesn't feel right. So if you have the option, play it on PC um this is a perfect game pass game i didn't have to pay anything for it yeah um it it is it has its issues um i would argue the same issues that most point and click adventure games have um really because i would argue it has a very specific issue that's unique to it Hmm. Uh, that that's only that only affects a certain genre of games but it seems to for some reason it seems to affect this game harder than it affects other games of its ilk i'm curious i i i will i will get the uh the negatives the the, the criticisms the critiques out of the way um it is you know this static location and if you are you know it's all about trial and error and it can be very like, oh, like if you fail at something and you have to start over, then it's just like you're, you're looking at the same thing for hours. Um, some of the animations look very weird. They look like Sims like, but not as good, uh, if that makes any sense. Um, the voice acting is good, but it is you can tell that they were lines scripted right because you have to hear certain lines and certain um, um phrases over and over and over again you really can tell what's it doesn't feel like a natural conversation right um the uh and you know with any point click adventure game if you don't like literally test out and try everything you can get stuck. And once you get stuck, then you're like, well, shit, right? Like it's, it's like being stuck in an escape room and you don't know what to do. So you just got to wait your hour, right? Like it, th then it's not fun. But um, the thing that keeps me going is the stories, the mystery. So uh, a broad overview of the story. You play as a man uh, voiced by James McAvoy he comes home. Uh, his wife, played by Daisy Ridley, uh, has something to tell him. And uh, all of a sudden, you hear a knock at the door. And a cop, played by Willem Dafoe, comes in. And dark things happen. And um, when I say dark things happen, like, this game gets really dark, dude. Like, there's, there's a lot of, like, oh... Oh, I, I did not realize that that this is what we were doing. Um, but I'm interested enough to want to like I I I know a lot of things that happen. Um, and I even got an achievement for uh, for for I think they call it like the cowardly ending. Mm -hmm. um, but it is I, I can't really talk about it without really spoiling things right spoiling things uh that's that's the type of game this is it's it's a game where you want to compare 
uh, notes on the choices you made and the things that you've done. Um, but it's a point and click adventure game. Just know that going in, it's a point and click adventure game. And if you do not like point and click adventure games or, and even not even like point and click, like the walking dead, cause like the walking dead, there's like, you know, some, or, or telltale games in general. Telltale games are basically just picking dialogue choices. It's not a true point and click adventure game. Right. Like there's not like too much, like interact with this object, combine these two objects together to solve this puzzle. It's it's a puzzle game, and the puzzle the puzzle can get frustrating if you if you aren't the type that is going to like really scan each and every little thing to see if you can pick it up, and it's cumbersome on a controller. Yeah, right. Like do it on a mouse. You uh, um, but you you touched on the thing that's been one of the big critiques I've heard about the game is the fact that because it's a time loop game, and because it's a point and click adventure game, like you are literally like experiencing the same dialogue trees mm -hmm. over and over and over again like someone said it's not like like people compared it to groundhog day the movie but it's like if you were bill murray in groundhog day like that's kind of like what yeah what it is yeah. um yeah when i read that i knew the game was not for me <laughs> so of course i immediately then went to go read about like the shocking <laughs> twist in the game and uh i can't wait to talk to you about it <laughs> once you beat the game yeah i love a good time loop story yeah. um i'm a big fan of point and click adventure games and i and i like a good time loop story uh but some people who i really trust set, had some things to say about this game so like i i looked into it a little bit and um nope yeah I, uh, <laughs> nope <laughs> This is not going to be a game for me to play. I'll tell you, one of the endings I got was just horrible. Yeah, it was it was, you know, like if this is the and it was if this is the type of game that it's going to be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> it, it was horrible. Put it, I'll, <laughs> it, I'll, I'll put it I'll put it to you like this. We're not going to I'm not going to say the name of the movie. But there is a notable movie of the past, <laughs> like two decades, that it's been compared to because it's you know, of uh, the 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 story is kind of a riff off of that. But I'm not going to say more than that. But as soon as I heard about the twist, I was like, oh, it's this. Who does, <laughs> that, that, who does the movie star? Who I can't. Star? I cannot tell you because if I if I oh, okay. tell you the movie, <laughs> it will ruin the twist. Oh, so, all right. So, so I, so I literally, <laughs> I literally can't tell even tell you that information okay all right. right so so don't so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do that to you i want you to play the game first and then we can talk about it uh after the fact so all right all right but it's um yeah it's i'm, I'm interested uh, i'm interested but um but i'm game pass interested right like i don't know if i would i don't know if i would you know you're not spending actually yeah i don't know if i would kick out 25 bucks for this right yeah like, but but i am i am interested enough to keep it going i i feel like i feel like uh with a couple more or a couple different um a, a couple different ways of of approaching this thing i feel like i can try to get like some sort of satisfying ending like the like the stuff that's going on and the revelations that i've i've been able to unlock i i, I can't imagine anyone is coming out of this <laughs> you know happy like satisfied right it doesn't like, really seem like anyone who has played it has been like i feel good about having played this game <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah like like i like i feel like i'm gonna need to watch like something wholesome after every play <laughs> session but um but yeah we'll see we'll see i hope to uh get everything that i want out of it by next week and well, from um, what i understand like judging by how much you've played it i don't feel like that you're far from the end based on what i've heard other people like the time that i've heard other people say put into the game so okay all right. But then again, there's so, multiple endings. I don't. I don't know how deep you want to dig into the endings to see. You know, stuff like this. I. I. Uh, I want to like normally like when the achievement popped, mm -hmm. it was. It felt like this is an ending achievement, 
but then the thing reset. Like I didn't get any credits. Yeah. So I would like to play it till I get credits. Mm -hmm. But if I get any more like endings, quote unquote, that, and I'm, and I'm not satisfied, then I'm just gonna, then I'm just gonna figure, or, or I'm gonna figure out what the, what the, what the hell I have to do. Gotcha. Cause, cause uh, I'm not trying to spend all day on this. I've got a whole nother Island to explore in ghost of Tsushima. I do too. I downloaded it. I haven't got a chance to play it yet because uh, I've just been sim racing too much. <laughs> wait, till, wait, I'll wait till next week. Wait till next week. Pull the trigger. Pull the trigger. <laughs> oh, you did it, huh? I did. You did it. I did. Ah, that's awesome. All I right. did. It's gonna be. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm <laughs> That got got no pushback from the boss, by the way, on on this, which which I was shocked at. Uh, you know that that you know what that means. What's that? Uh, hey, let me uh, let me let me try. Of course, yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 you're gonna want to hop into this thing, right? Like, because 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 I did not only the wheel, but I also got like the folding, the folding like cockpit as well. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, look, if you're gonna, gonna do, do it, it, if you're gonna do it, do it. Well, like like my desk, like. Like my desk is good, right? But it's it's not like like vibrations going through it like crazy would be bad. Like you see, like I'm shaking my desk slightly right now. My monitor is like shaking like crazy. Like you can tell based on the camera. I'm not an ogre. I, I know. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to talking about that. Um, but I do want to play Ghost Tsushima, and I do really want to get into uh, Legends. Uh, with Micah and actually put some time into that, especially because yeah. with the new stuff they have coming to that, um, because it's gonna be standalone mode in a couple of weeks, and they're adding a new like rivals mode that you can, you know, compete against other teams in terms of your killing prowess. Essentially, oh, nice. Yeah, so it's gonna be cool. Um, I'm looking forward to to getting back into that world. Um, I've been playing. So like I I talked briefly about Monster Train uh, when I was trying the Xbox Game Pass thing, and then it came out on Switch, and I wasn't. So, like, when I played on Xbox, like, it was okay. I played a few games of it, and it wasn't really clicking with me as much. Um, but every, almost everyone that I follow in, like, my board game Twitter sphere that plays these games um, basically hold this up next to Slay the Spire as, like, the top two, like, roguelike deck builders that, that exist out there. Um, so I gave it a shot. I bought it on Switch. I've been enjoying it a lot more. Um but it's still, it's not the same thing. Like, like it's it's got obvious comparisons to Slay the Spire, but it's it's really not the same game. So like Monster Train, it's a deck builder. It's roguelike. It's like a streamlined version, though, because a run would, is only going to have eight encounters maximum. Um, I haven't gotten any kind of end game yet, so I don't know if that increases. But as far as I know, um, each run is going to be eight encounters. When the run starts, you know at least who the three bosses that you're going to fight are during the run so you can kind of plan like you can build your deck around things they do um and in the game it's it's almost kind of like magic the gathering-esque because there's six factions in the game you pick a main faction and then like an alt faction to build your deck with um the main faction determines which champion you get which is like a special creature that you can summon um and then each like you'll draft cards from both factions as you go along the run um that's also where this is a little different is that you have creature cards that you can summon and then you have like spell cards that kind of recycle through your deck, but the creature cards, once you play them, um, they're out of your deck for that battle. So like if they die, you don't get them back again. So you have to kind of manage that as well. And then the kind of the, the hook with monster train is that the battlefield is actually like a four tiered battlefield. Cause it's literally like a train car and you have a pyre at the top of the train car and ultimately that's what you're trying to protect because if the enemies attack your pyre then you lose um but the way it works is that enemies when they like they spawn in waves and when they come in they always come in on the ground floor and then each turn if they're still alive they'll move up to the next floor until they reach your pyre and when you summon units you have to pick which floor they're summoned on so you it, it, it becomes a tactics game uh, in that regard um it's an interesting game it does some different things that other games in this genre don't typically do but in slay the spire like slay the spire and hades feel very similar to me it's probably why i like both of them so much is because 
you you start out like not being a complete idiot in those games but you don't get very far but you still feel like you accomplish something and then the game rewards you for learning it like 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 you get a little deeper you make it a little further you get to a new world and then you get your ass handed to you but then you realize like you know how to play in that world and you tend to learn like where you can push the envelope a little bit where you need to play a little more conservatively based on what you've seen before and in slay the spire and in hades like when you can build like very clever builds like you can like build stuff that like feels very satisfying to kind of click everything in a place monster train doesn't really do that like monster train you're constantly just optimizing based on how you've built your deck previously because again you're not adding cards nearly as frequently as you are in slay the spire so like you're just saying okay my deck's kind of centered around this thing so i should just get cards that make this thing better and like i beat monster train like i like i made it through a complete run on my second playthrough and i don't think i've died like I, I've done like six or seven runs and I think I've beaten it at least five times at this point. So like, I haven't found the challenge yet. Um, they do have the kind of like Ascension mode that Slay the Spire has where you can make things slightly more difficult on subsequent runs, um, which I guess is where the challenge of the game comes along. I don't really know how long this one's going to stick with me. It's a good game, but it's not the best game in this kind of like subgenre that exists out there. Um, but it's fun for a lark. I wouldn't pay $30 for it. That's what I paid for it. Uh, this is definitely a game you want to wait to go on like a half price sale, um, in the eShop before you pick it up. So I, I'm not advocating anyone run out and get it now. I think it's cheaper on steam. So if you want to check it out, um, you can check it out on steam for a little bit of a lower price, but yeah, it's monster train. It's, it's good. Um, it's just not, it's not great. It's not great so far. Um, you know, it is great Pokemon snap getting DLC, which we couldn't do back in the uh, n64 yeah era. yeah it's good i've been playing it a little bit i'm in a bit of a single player game lull right now um because i i don't really have anything big coming out until like november right now mm-hmm. so i'm really just playing final fantasy 14 um but uh there they added two new areas for the new pokemon snap um one of which was specifically designed to uh be very similar to, to the original river level from um from the n64 days to the point where like literally todd in the game is like i think i'm gonna be nostalgic going to one of these new areas i'm like thanks nintendo i get it <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah it's good look this game's really fun um i have a feeling they're going to keep doing these little updates and um i mean god there's so many Pokemon for them to add and and so many things that they could do. Um, so yeah, it's good. It's free. So zero complaints. Let me, let me pause a question to you guys. Is Nintendo the only company that truly does DLC? Like, are they the best at it, do you think, with their games? Not counting with, mobile, with their first mobile. party games? Yeah. Uh, I would say so. Um, in so much that so much of what they do is free updates and the biggest complaints that people have had about DLC with Pokemon was when they did the two DLC packs for Sword and Shield, but ultimately they don't do third versions of games anymore. So all of, all of the extra content that was just $20 worth of DLC would have been like if we were living in an era where they couldn't do that that would have just been on the third version or sequel version of the content of the games so i right. and you and you would have had to play through the whole base game again yeah Probably. so <laughs> i i think nintendo is is certainly up there when it ter- comes to how they handle the dlc content in their first party games yeah yeah it just, like I said, it just seems they seem to be the less the least irritating so like gran turismo since i've been playing a ton of that like whenever you go to buy a car in the game like it gives you like do you want to pay with credits or do you want to go to the playstation store to, <laughs> to, to buy this for you know two dollars and, and to their credit like you can actually turn off the playstation store prompts um which is which is nice but just like the fact that it was there to begin with uh it's kind of annoying and like they literally have a store item for every single car that's in that game 
that you can buy with real money bucks uh, if you really want to. So a um, lot of new games coming out this week. One that I'm like desperately curious about, but I also know that it's not a game that would play well unless you have friends to play it with. And that's Aliens mm-hmm. Fireteam Elite uh, for PlayStation, Xbox, PC. Uh, like I said, it looks neat. Um, but again, it, it, I feel like it's like the Predator thing where if you don't have people to play with, then it's not really gonna not really gonna jive as well. Uh, Hoa comes to Switch and PC. I expect you to die too. The Spy and the Liar comes to PlayStation VR, Rift, Oculus Quest, and Vive. Um, King's Bounty 2 comes to PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC. Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts 2 gets a PS5 upgrade. Uh, Marvel Future Revolution comes to mobile. Psychonauts 2 comes to PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Uh, Proto Corgi comes to Switch and PC. I don't even want to know. Uh, the Spelunky games are coming to Nintendo Switch. Baldo, the Guardian Owls, comes to PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, PC, and iOS. Uh, Inked, A Tale of Love, comes to Xbox One and PC. And Mike is getting a new game this week because No More Heroes <laughs> 3 comes to Nintendo Switch. Uh, that's how out of it I am. I did not know that was coming out. <laughs> I, I forgot it was coming out this week. I thought you pre-ordered it. No, I told you I'm not. Uh, I'm not pre-ordering. That's games. right. It's, it's, a, it's a new you. It's, it's a, a new. it's a it's a new day. Rocks. Um, <laughs> go to uh, go to densepixels.com slash fans. Go to densepixels.com slash fans and check out our Discord. Uh, while you're there, you can post uh, questions for the post office. Um, uh, questions that don't pertain to wrestling, as Carrie uh, pointed out. Uh, you can I post mean, the. Some, you can post Summer, the SummerSlam was. I, I expect. I know. So I, I expected a yeah, lot, but was, I wanted to casually <laughs> remind people that they are allowed to ask about things that aren't wrestling. Yeah, it was. It was a big wrestling weekend. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly uh, was. It certainly uh, was. So. Uh, you can uh, you can post questions to the post office. You can uh, uh, share all the video game news that's worth talking about uh you can look for people to play games with we have a grand old time we have a gay old time in there <laughs> as uh as as uh said by the flintstones so go to densepixels.com slash fans um and then when you're done that you can go to youtube.com slash dense pixels and uh subscribe click uh subscribe click the bell notification icon to be notified of when we notify you of notifications and um you're doing great micah and uh that's what they say right smash it smash micah, that micah button. is a real youtube man <laughs> i'm a man on youtube <laughs> uh so therefore my opinion is valid and carrie shut up <laughs> that's that's how it works apparently um fuck you lamont um <laughs> subscribe to all of the tmp studios podcasts wherever you get your podcasts uh including the nerd apocalypse uh, black on black cinema coming distractions uh, i think jay might want to talk about snake eyes uh even though it's been yeah. out for a while uh he hated it has um, it been out for a while <laughs> it has it's, i guess yeah, it came it out has. i remember seeing ads for it and then it's been out not for like hearing. two months no, wow before. okay <laughs> <laughs> I keep and, trying uh, to get Jay to talk about In the Heights. That's been out uh, for like three months now. There you go. We'll uh, more on that in a bit. Uh, and the weekly preview episode of Look for a Political Podcast. Uh, look, that's not enough, right? It's not enough. Uh, go to densepixels.com slash premium. And for $5 a month or $50 for the entire year, you get our entire back catalog of podcasts, uh, including access to uh, the airing of grievances, No Time to Bleed, The Men with the Golden Tongues, which will have a new episode uh, in September uh, Mm. regarding Metal Gear Solid 2. Um, Upstage Conversation. Uh, the F, the where hopefully they will mention where they will talk about the aforementioned in the heights. I'm soon. hoping. Uh, I I have I have I've got the fucking receipts where I keep asking him, hey, you got time next week? And he's like, yep, I sure do. And then he never if, follows if, up. If not, we'll have to pull together a, a music man episode. Hey, that's fine. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know I can, I, Brad is reliable when it comes to recording the premium content. Oh yeah. Yeah. Brad is always reliable. That's like said, uh, at, at, so, at some point. Or like, I can well, subject Andy to something else terrible. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the crown jewel 
of the well uh, we can't really use that terminology the uh the keystone <laughs> of the uh <laughs> of the dead pixels uh right, could, you imagine how rich we'd be <laughs> <laughs> the uh the keystone of the premium content wing of uh of tmp studios the entire uh two hour ish episode of the look forward political podcast where in the first hour which is free they do a a, a very good job of, of of giving you uh political content as reasonably possible as they can uh and then in the second hour uh it's it's like the after party man. <laughs> you know they they just they go they we, go wild. We, we save all the juicy stories for hour two. Like 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 the first the first hour, like you still get laughs, but it's but it's really wonky and, and we try to keep things as serious as possible. And then hour two uh is just cut loose time. So. Yeah, it's hour two is the I, slander hour. I, I feel like <laughs> I'm overdue for a look forward appearance at this point. But uh side note before we move into news, uh yeah. on the on the YouTube feed. I went to Oticon a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, shit. And there should be... Two interviews. Two interviews. I don't know if they're up already. I think they are. Oh, they are? Well, maybe not. Maybe not. No, you know what? I saw them in our share drive. So I don't know if they're actually posted yet. So So if Jay remembers to post them, they will be on, I think, the main Nerdpocalypse YouTube channel. But there's some video gaming related content because i talked to voice actor kg tang who's the um the the voice of a, a lot of folks but video game wise he's the main character in yakuza like a dragon um his name escapes me right now and uh, i also talked with eric roth ichiban. ichiban uh i also talked with eric roth or yeah who's the um the conductor and orchestrator and one of the main arrangers for a lot of these touring Final Fantasy shows. So that was really cool. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. Hopefully Jay remembers to upload that stuff. Uh, I would like to just have have some fun before we, because like, like the topics this week are actually like shockingly like not nothing Activision related, which is amazing. We, um, we finally have a break from Activision. However, do, there, but, things but, are but, still bullshit right, in the industry. Things are still pretty crazy. Um, but let's have some fun. Um, Todd Howard can't be stopped. Todd can't Howard stop. cannot be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> he, he can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> and, and yet, somehow. <laughs> Here, here's, here's the thing that blows my mind with this 10th anniversary edition of Skyrim that they yep. plan on releasing is that they're releasing it on PS4 where they've already released an HD version of mm-hmm. Skyrim. Like, I don't, I don't understand what more aside from 500 community creations, this is going to add. That's basically it. Okay. And fishing. Neat. Neat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Are they couldn't charge $60 for this. No, so here's the thing. I I don't think it's going to retail for sixty. And also, if you already have the special edition, which is the HD edition, you get the anniversary edition content okay. immediately for free. That's more benevolent than I expected them to be. Yeah. Honestly. So it's not in the PlayStation Store yet, so I can't I cannot confirm or deny if it's going to be sixty dollars when it comes out. Right. So, yeah, they're putting <laughs> Skyrim out once I mean, again. I'm not surprised be. because it is the 10th anniversary of Skyrim this year, November 11th. It will release, the, the anniversary edition will release appropriately on the anniversary. Um, so, yeah, fucking whatever. <laughs> no, I saw. I'll, I'll go back and I'll play it for another 20 hours i'm sure i saw something i don't know if, how true it was because it was it was a headline and um and when i realized what the headline was about i, I refused to click the link but um <laughs> did he say something to the effect of we'll stop making them if you stop buying them <laughs> i don't <laughs> think so okay but here's All the right. thing i mean they they have no incentive to stop right now because one i have to imagine this was a very easy thing for bethesda to do because all of this stuff, the creation club stuff is fan generated content. And there's some really cool stuff in there. Um, 
some of the more popular mods like survival mode are be, is, that's being added. So that adds um, hunger, fatigue, um, limitations on fast travel, carry weight, etc. cetera. Um, and then the whole uh, Saints and Seducers quest mod themed around the Shivering Isles, which is uh, was one of the expansion packs for Oblivion. So like, this is adding some really cool um, fan generated content that unless you're really into the mod scene, you probably haven't paid that much attention to. Um, so yeah, it's it's an easy little, quick little upgrade. I'm, I don't know if Skyrim was already available to play on PS5 and Series X. I mean, you can X. play the PS4 version. Yeah. Look, I don't want to have to buy it again. Like that's. That, I don't that's think. My, here's the thing: if thing. you already own it at this point, you yeah. own the special edition. There's no like you're not going to have to buy the game again. You're just getting a right. And nor nor can I imagine there's gonna be any like PS5 exclusive like no. incentives to doing so. Like the, it's not, the it's not, only <laughs> console exclusive content that I think they've ever done was putting in like the Master Sword and the Hylian Shield in the Switch version of the game. Skyrim. And like Link's blue tunic from Breath of the Wild, you can wear. Skyrim and Dragon Age are like the two games that I'm pained that I can't get more into. Yeah. Because I feel like I should. Look. I feel like I should. So. Skyrim, uh, Skyrim, I think, still has my most hours played in it across the different consoles. That's, that's surprising. Given how much time I've put how into Monster Hunter. Played, yeah, or New Vegas yeah. in general, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, New, New Vegas is... Yeah, I, I know that I've played something like 607 hours of Skyrim, and I think my total play time in New Vegas is something like maybe 200 hours. Um, Interesting. But yeah, uh, he's done it again, Todd Howard. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of doing it again, let's get into the shit. Um, so look, Epic's like Empire has been built on creating a game engine and then stealing another company's like greatest idea and just doing it better than mm -hmm. they did so like no, we shouldn't be surprised that this is a thing that happened however this is the first time that a developer has really like lashed out and been genuine and called them on their bullshit right call and called that so so what had happened is there's a new limited time event within fortnite it's called imposters you would be hard pressed to find a major difference between the imposters mode in fortnite and what among us the video game is the, the you know the wildly successful like indie indie game that could among us um here's the thing that the that the developers of among us were pissed off about though they weren't upset that epic did this they were upset that they did it without even like attempting to collaborate with them because like among us has shown like they're a company that will collaborate with anyone that wants to like there's a right. ratchet and clank skin in among us right, right. Now. And they're, like you know it's they're like they're like yeah we're having fun we're making like like they are among the as as altruistic as you can be because they're it's a really and they're a team, team of like 20 people yeah. at most like they're well, like a really not, really small team it's not big um and Fort and Epic Games has collaborated with so many people with Fortnite. Like, how many Fortnite collaborations are there? And this would have been one that I feel like would have been incredibly like negligible from a cost standpoint. Like, I can't imagine that they but, would that that they would have requested a ton of money. But that's the thing, right? They don't have to pay. Them, no, right? because, because you're taking you're taking a mechanic, and like not only are you taking a mechanic, but you're also like someone from the the uh, among us team posted a picture of like the map the maps are suspiciously similar and, and they're very other. similar they're very like so, like side by side with the fortnite map and they're they're incredibly similar yeah um and yeah it's it's just it's, it's just why and and again like they the the tweets from like the development team were so like dejected because they're like we're making this fun game like it's it's been successful beyond our wildest dreams and then it just sucks because here's this big bad company that's coming along that's just fucking cribbing it and again that's what fortnite is like fortnite is literally <laughs> like oh shit look at all this money that PUBG is making let's implement this game mode onto our fledgling co-op zombie game and inadvertently create like the biggest phenomenon in the world to the point where they got sued yeah by, Pup, by PUBG, PUBG and, and had to settle out of court 
over it because even though you can't copyright a game's mechanics like come on like <laughs> like like it is what it is you're trying to eat our lunch um but yeah like like they were just like like the like the um inner sloth folks that develop among us were just like they were just saying, like, like, what that. the fuck? All yeah, you had all to do was ask us and we would have collaborated with you. Yeah, it's shitty. It's really shitty to see. I mean, obviously, it's it's one thing to do because, you know, Among Us is not the first game to have a fucking werewolf mechanic. No, that's it, all it and, is. And, and, and it's that's, werewolf. That's the thing about it. Like, it's it's just the most successful digital implementation of werewolf. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's werewolf with little mini games, basically. Um, so, you know, it's... And, it, you know, I I spent a lot of time last year playing Among Us with friends and had a really good time. And, like, I'm I'm looking at Epic and I'm just like, what are you doing? It's like, and, and everyone can see them doing this. And I feel like, I feel like this, this is something that may, you know, damage their reputation a little bit. I don't think people are no. going to stop playing Fortnite, yeah. but I feel like people are going to look at, at Epic slightly differently after, after this sort of thing, you know, because I mean, people really fucking like Among Us. Maybe people in the industry, right? But yeah. I don't think the consumer gives a damn. Well, um, I don't think the, I don't think the, 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 the people playing Fortnite really, uh, yeah, there's a wide swath of people who play Fortnite, right? Yeah. right? And, and, and for the and for the kids, they're probably just like, oh shit, I can play Among Us in Fortnite. Like with uh, yeah. friends, like right. like like yeah. they're not even paying any mind, honestly. Yeah. Um that's fucked up though. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's it's, it's really and, fucked and up. It's, 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 it's shitty. Why we, well it's, it's also why we told you like during the whole Apple Epic thing to like temper the good guy epic fucking narrative that that people were trying to float out there because they're they're not like they're they just so it just so happens that they are the good guys in this situation like right. when they're, when they're giving a you know eight uh, 88 split to developers like they just happen to be the good guys in this situation but there is a many many other situations that they are not going to be uh the good guys in because they are a giant corporation who's publicly traded who is beholden to making money all the time so that's all it is um <laughs> I felt bad for those guys. Like it's 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 shitty. Like it was shitty when they kind of took the battle royale concepts. Um, but yeah, just 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 to see the the people kind of you know getting upset about it, like that put an extra little dimension onto it. Yeah. Um exploitativeness is gonna be a theme this week. So there's a sure huge is. story that came from Waypoint um that Patrick Klepik wrote. I encourage you to read it because it's really long and we're not gonna get too deep into it. Um, but Unity, uh, makes arguably like the second most well-known gaming engine that exists out there behind Unreal. Like ev everyone's played a game that runs on the Unity engine that's seen the Unity splash screen, like at, at the top before I'm sure. Um, but what's interesting is that Unity, much like many other tech companies also have several government contracts because when you want to be a tech corporation, and you want to be successful and make lots of money, uh, going getting contracts for the government is a very easy way to do that. And it's now causing some consternation with folks that work at Unity because it really seems like that pretty much all of their government contracts that they have are military contracts. And there's not a lot of transparency around what exactly the technology that Unity has been developing for the government is being used for and whether it's not it's being used in war efforts and if you work for unity i feel like that's something that you might want to know and certainly their employees want to know and this is a really wide-ranging story uh that patrick Klubbeck apparently has been putting together for months uh that he finally dropped out there today the impact of which is such that uh the ceo of unity john Riccello actually sent out a company-wide email in advance of the story being published uh to kind of like get out there and spin the employees to some mm -hmm. extent uh before the story landed because that's how thorough uh the sourcing is going to be micah how much uh how much how much unity projects are are going on in the government right now do you do you think well you're, first you're, of you're, all, you're, a, you're a government man first of all get <laughs> your politics out of my video games <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Every week you seem to be able to find these stories. And I know that you must be really digging because politics <laughs> and video games rare. 
it never happens. Super rare. It's only it's only when those fucking awful liberals have to <laughs> have to say something that we have politics and video games, right? Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I mean, this sucks, right? Because like these people are like helping simulate drone strikes for God's sakes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't love it. Like <laughs> I mean, like that's what they're doing, and. Um, you know, some people might not have a problem with it. I, I kind of have a little bit of a problem with it. Um, but uh, yeah, it it I, it's it sucks, man. Like it feels I, like a situation where these people are probably sitting there, like this was not in the job description. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> like the thing though, so like it's one thing, like okay, so you don't work in what's called the gov tech division of right. Unity, right so it's like okay i don't work there but i'm not working on this but let's say you are developing like a new vr interface engine to use in 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 for for like the 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 rift for example and it works really well and you're like oh we have this cool vr engine and the government's like oh like you know what we're trying to do VR training simulators for our troops so that they can train without having to you know, risk being in actual combat. And so a uni is like, well, we already have, like, we don't have to rebuild a new VR simulate because we already have this interface that we can use and incorporate it. So like, even though you're not directly like tasked with creating this thing, you have no idea like how much of things that you have created are finding their way into things that you might have a moral you know, a uh, problem with like a moral dilemma that, you know, if you knew what was going on, like this would be the case. And like, apparently like Unity tried to spin it to their employees, like, oh, like, no, like it's not, like, it's not like we're just working with the Department of Defense. Like it's the GovTech thing. Like we have all these government contracts. And so they were like, well, how many contracts do you have with the government? How many projects are we working on that aren't Department of Defense related? And they were like, oh, let's check the numbers. Um one <laughs> like, like just just one right now um everything else is, is going through the dod and there's apparently like a committee that they keep internally that's made up employees and executives that kind of determine the moral you know quandary with these projects and like should they get into them or not mm. and they advise john Ridicello on whether or not to accept them but ultimately they don't have like any binding power. Like they're just there to make a recommendation and whatever John real shell wants to do is fine Ugh. for a company that's worth $33 billion by the way. Yeah. Um, it's shit like this that <laughs> makes me say things like all, uh, computer science. Uh, like I, I would say every degree should require you to take an ethics course. <laughs> <laughs> all of them all of them should make you take an ethics course and not just one like related to your industry like i had to take media ethics when i was getting my bachelor's um yeah but everyone should ethics course. everyone should take i feel like everyone should probably take media ethics but everyone should probably take general ethics as well yeah hey guys we're we're gonna good news guys we got a new contractor we're not working with the dod anymore oh who's the contract we're subcontracted by someone else oh who are we subcontracted by raytheon oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, uh, okay uh, <laughs> and 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 again and they like like they also did like the the normal like tech company where like oh, listen like we're like we're committed to being open source and we're not here to police like who uses this for this side of the other thing and it's like all right if, if you put out an open source platform I suppose you can wash your hands of some of it because it's like, hey, we're just putting it out there and whatever it gets used for is what it is. Like, we're just putting it in, into the ether. Again, there, I think I still feel like there's some kind of responsibility around that. But if it's open source, it's available for anyone to download. Okay. Like, I guess, I guess you have somewhat of a stance. But again, you are actively deciding. It's not like it's not like you're just leaving this out there and the government's like, oh, let me come across this fine tech engine that I can, you know, use for for this, that, or the other thing. Like, no, like you're literally taking commission from them right. and doing projects. You're taking on. their money specifically. Right. So it's interesting. Um, like I said, I fully encourage you to seek out and read 
uh, the entire story. Again, it's very long, uh, but there's a lot of really interesting information. We really just scratched the surface of this. Um, but yeah, like it's, 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 it's a wild story uh, that honestly, I don't know why we didn't think about this because any tech company that's worth their salt uh, and has been wildly successful, I would almost guarantee has worked with the government in some capacity because that's who's usually put yeah, the that's who's that's who's paying man that's right. who's paying and it's super e- it's super easy not super easy to get a government contract right but like you you still have to fight for them but once you're in the money the money just keeps coming yeah and and you you know you get addicted to it right like it's and and you're generally like like it's I mean, I hate to say it like this, but it's generally interesting work, right? Like, because you're, you're really on the, uh, you're, 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 you get to play with the, you get to play on the bleeding edge mm-hmm. to, and, and for people who create stuff like that, like that's an exciting prospect until you think about like how it's going to be implemented. You know, I just, uh, yeah. Wow, man. <laughs> store is wild, dude. Yeah. Um, along those lines, another story that, again, we are just going to be scratching the surface of, and I highly encourage you to check out the YouTube video called in from uh, a channel called people make games. Uh, it's called investigation, how Roblox is exploiting young game developers. Uh, if that's not a hot enough title for you, uh, produced by Quentin Smith, who I know from shut up and sit down fame, a uh, famous board game reviewer. This is his other gig that he does, uh, as well, but it's a 20 minute long dive into basically how roblox really it fucking sucks exploits and we children yeah and, and we don't <laughs> talk about it because it doesn't really exist in our sphere of the gaming universe mm-hmm. at all because it's like we don't like kids play roblox like it's not a game that that you know core gamers i would say typically play so the thing about what roblox is roblox is in many ways like minecraft but to ratchet it up to like the nth degree like like it's almost like if minecraft met little big planet like it, it's so it's a, it's a platform that revolves around kids making games for other kids to be able to play and you can actually monetize your game but you're not paid with actual money uh you are paid with of course robux which is the digital in-game currency uh, that you can use in Roblox to buy characters and and things of that nature. Um, much like in any like crowdsourced area, it's very difficult to get your stuff noticed. Uh, but don't worry, because if you want to make sure you can float your stuff to the top of the queue, uh, you can buy ad space that they <laughs> auction off to folks that are that that make stuff. Um, now, also good news is that you can take your Robux and you can actually withdraw it from the game and get actual money, which is how, you know, you can actually make money from being a game developer. Here's right. the problem is that in the game, there's a minimum withdrawal amount that you cannot withdraw unless you have a certain amount of, of Robux in your account. And that certain amount of Robux translates to a thousand real world dollars. It's a it's a hundred thousand Robux that you have to have before you can make a withdrawal. So of course, most people aren't getting anywhere close to that threshold. <laughs> so they're only so like they might only have like fifty thousand Robux. So it, you can't pull the money out. So what are you going to do with your fifty thousand Robux? You're going to keep well, putting you're just going to dump it right back into the game, essentially wow. at the yeah. end of the day, and then creators. And that that's for any Robux user, by the way, like that, that, that's not just that. So that's not just people that are making stuff creators to be able to withdraw Robux out of the game first have to pay for a monthly premium subscription. Like that's number one. And then remember how I said that if you're a regular user, you can withdraw a hundred thousand Robux and get a thousand dollars back. Well, if you are a creator, that makes these games, 100,000 Robux will only get you $350 in the system. So, so like your, your Robux are literally worth like 35 cents on the dollars, on the Jeez. dollar compared to general users. 
essentially on top of this monthly subscription fee that you have to that you have to pay for god damn which is insane which is insane oh by the way robux roblox just went public like a few months ago and, are, and, and is valued at billions of dollars in case you weren't sure jesus christ yeah uh um, roblox's statement uh in response to this is roblox is a user-generated content platform where people around the world come together co to connect and enjoy experiences together all of the experiences are built by our community who use our free tools to create rich deep and immersive experiences for the community to enjoy at the same time building experiences on roblox teaches the fundamentals of coding digital civility and entrepreneurship and has helped many begin their careers in stem oh by the way roblox also the company that took any mention of the word game from their website in the oh, way the yeah, Apple Epic stuff and changed the two experiences so that they yeah. couldn't be sued by Apple. I mean, or, 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 or have their have their game delisted off of the App Store. Just smart. I mean, that's that. I mean, given what Apple was doing, I remember being just like, "It's a good move on their part." Yeah. So according according to Roblox, also uh, apparently reportedly by them, over six hundred developers have earned $85,000 or more a year uh, from their creations in Roblox, which I have to imagine is a percent of a percent of a percent of the yeah. people that are creating things in Roblox. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so again, it's, it's, it's the same thing that you see from a lot of companies like this, that you see in like this fucking loot box culture that we've created where it's like, Hey, work real hard and you too could make it like, like it's like they're pitching the fucking American dream. Right. Except it's a fucking pyramid it, scheme. Right. Except they're doing it to children. It, right. It's a pyramid scheme. It's, like, like, it's a like, fucking multi-level marketing scheme. It's, it's, it's Avon, <laughs> except all of the Avon ladies are 12 year old boys trying to make video games online. Like, 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 like in the, in the video, Quinn's literally like interviews this 11 year old developer essentially that's been making stuff on roblox that he talks about like just how difficult it is to get to get people to pay attention to things because there's just so much shit you know? <laughs> like, like like that that gets flooded into the content space and you feel pressured to pay money to advertise your stuff just so that it'll get just so it'll be visible like like that's the other thing too like like it, like, like now you're incorporating like the whole fucking twitch like social media pressure aspect yeah. of not been, but we're doing it to kids. Um, the thing it's that was up. the thing, the thing that was uh it was compared to um was things that mining companies used to do back in the day, where they would pay workers in what was called company script, which was basically like money that you could only use within the co the corporation. And if you tried to like cash out, you would get like pennies on the dollars for it. And it would basically it was a way to keep workers like employed with your company and make sure that they didn't go seek better conditions or that they didn't like unionize or yeah and or, i'm pretty they, sure like sure. we as a society determined that that was illegal and fucked up yes yes in fact like late like labor organizations were like no like this is not at all okay and, and it's it's a practice that the that is literally illegal to do yeah around the world now yeah. um I cannot wait until I remember learning about company scripts in mining in the United States in like middle school. Yeah. Yeah. I I cannot wait. I might I might send it over to my representatives. I cannot wait until a government official gets their hands on this fucking story. Uh yeah, and, just, and again just sees like like ah governments are like like game company exploits child developers. Like you I can't imagine that they're not going to take be taking a hard look at like child labor laws and things of that mm -hmm. nature not like not like they're forcing them to do it but they're once again video games creating this environment where people put the pressure onto themselves in order to to do these things and it's just why it's it's wild to me that this is a thing that is happening with one of the most financially successful games in the marketplace and none of us knew a damn thing about it couldn't couldn't oh, even man. couldn't even venture to guess that this is a thing that what this is a thing that roblox yeah did. jesus christ yeah it's, yeah. it's just yeah. scary man <laughs>
So, Micah, you better start training your son now to start to, <laughs> to, to make Roblox levels so that he can he can get you to retire at an early age when he strikes it big. Uh, yeah, yeah. I um, I I feel like uh, yeah. Wow, dude. Wow. Like, this is <laughs> like I'm <laughs> like I had never I had never I had heard of Roblox, but I you know I someone mentioned it in passing. He was like, hey you play video games. Do you know what this is? I'm like, Nope. looks like it's for kids. And I, I didn't pay it any mind, but yeah, like you said, once someone, uh, with a little bit of influence gets a hold of this, um, I, I, it will be, it will be interesting to see what the fallout of this is. Yeah. Uh, Fair. and hopefully all of video games don't get, uh, thrown under the bus. Oh, they will. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> now like Grand Theft Auto will be blamed for this, for this very E-rated game that has no, <laughs> no, no blood. Or... This, clearly like, oh, we're, Jesus. Just, we're just, we're just making people buy cars and boats and stuff. That's yeah. all. <laughs> so. Um, speaking of pieces of shit, Speaking Let's of, talk about Kurt Schilling. Shit. Man, isn't there so many, like, quick aside before we, <laughs> before we get into this story, there's so many athletes yeah. that I really wish I had not spent an iota of time that I spent, like, rooting for them, being, you know, happy for their successes, like, kind of, like, once you find out what kind of people they are, um, Kurt Schilling, 100% top uh. of that. I would say Rafael Palmeiro is probably no, mine. no. Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? Do you do you really think that? No, I don't think. Not- no, in terms of people yeah. who I rooted for, I, okay. no. Kurt Schilling is one of the worst of the worst in terms of, you know, since since you and I have been watching uh, the nation's pastime. Yes. Uh, though Trevor Bauer, my word, has rocketed to the top of that list over the last couple of that, years. Well, but at least he's doing it while he's still an active player. Yeah. So, so, so like you can so that hopefully he can go to jail him. now. <laughs> right. Like, like you can spite him in real time. Yeah. Like her chilling world no, I, I, hero. Yeah. Video game entrepreneur, like I like I was very excited about King's Bomb Lore. I was like, man, it's so cool that Kurt Schilling is making a video game. Like, this is awesome. Mm-hmm. And then became a fucking world-class lunatic. Yeah. Seemingly overnight. Just... Now, obviously, he always was. Like, like no, he, yeah. It's you know? just yeah. he finally got a platform to be a walnut in public. And <laughs> and now everyone knows how much of a fucking smooth-brained idiot he is. <laughs> well, we we talked we've talked many times about the trials and tribulations of the Amalur series and Thirty Eight Studios and the big. Huge- the series, it's a game. It's one game. Don't call it a series. The saga. It's the saga <laughs> of this one game that Thirty Eight Studios put one out. One game released twice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Still, still, still a great game though. It's still a good um, game. But apparently, so like one of the things that was a tragic end to the story is all, and, and again, Jason Schreier talks a lot about this in his new book. Highly recommend you read it. It was a fantastic read. Um, a lot of folks who came to 38 Studios who were owed like back pay. Like a lot of back pay. Like a lot of back pay that literally like uprooted themselves and moved to fucking Rhode Island. Rhode Island of all places. And like we're owed all this fucking back pay and got into like all sorts of like housing problems and things of that nature just because again, like, you know, like literally like the company, like people were moving out to Rhode Island and they're like, I've got a home though in like Massachusetts. Like, what do you want me to do? And they're just like, oh, the company will buy your house from you. In, in massachusetts so that you can move to rhode island like that like that, that that's something that they were doing there's nothing they, good in rhode island no well and 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 meanwhile the <laughs> company bought their my, house one of my worst exes lives in rhode island <laughs> but then once the company like went under like all of a sudden people the you know the bank was like no no, no you're you're still on you're still on the hook for this house that you have yeah. now you have two houses congratulations like this is great <laughs> yeah literally be like employees who literally were told like hey we'll take care of your mortgage and we're like, okay, cool. Sounds good. Um, like and then psych. bought another house and now have we're on the hook for two mortgages. Yeah. So so after because Kurt decade, Schilling's an asshole. After a decade, um, employees are finally getting their back pay, except only like 
15 to 20 percent of what they were owed essentially yeah after this decade long struggle yeah it's like i said it's it's kind of like a coda on what has been one of the most remarkable not in a good way stories yeah in in all of video game development um but i'm glad that a lot of these folks are getting some money i would hope that the the majority of them within the past decade have found a way to get on their feet um and not be saddled and burdened by the failings of a guy that didn't know what the fuck he was doing yeah kurt schilling basically (laughs) decided he was going to throw a lot of money at a video game studio and then he lost all of his money and then everyone who worked for him lost all of their money yeah because because he's because he he john hammonded himself a video game studio yeah no expense and and like the greatest video game studio of all time and it was it was you know what i most liken it to so there's an episode of the simpsons of course where (laughs) homer gets into a grudge with like the springfield department of sanitation and so like he runs for sanitation commissioner and manages to get elected by making like all sorts of like wild promises over what's going to happen to the sanitation department. And he, and he creates like this amazing sanitation department, like that had these like sparkling uniforms and are picking up your trash every day and are there to like, like do the stuff, like do the dirty jobs that you don't want to do. And of course he blows through the entire yearly budget for the department in one month. And so the solution to solving this problem is he basically starts outsourcing, uh, where other cities can dump their garbage in Springfield uh, to the point where they literally had to move the town seven miles like to the West because they had so much garbage all over the town. One of the, one of the best episodes of the Simpsons, but literally Kurt Schilling fucking Springfield sanitation department, a video game company. I mean, he's Springfield sanitation company, the state of Rhode Island. Everybody (laughs) else to deal with the fucking mound of trash that he left behind. Yeah. His wake by making all sorts of wild. Didn't the SEC get involved? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so because, because basically they were trying to defraud investors in the company when they were trying to stay afloat. Like, not yeah, they defrauded how, the state of Rhode Island because like the, they, they got like how, a how huge amount of money from the government. Yeah, <sighs> that, that's what got them the troubles. They took the seventy-five million dollar loan mm-hmm. and they burned through it. Mm-hmm. And the government's like, "That was a loan. Mm-hmm. Like, you just start paying the loan back." And they're just like, "Well, we don't really have any revenue coming in, right?" No, now. we're <laughs> we're not paying that back. We, yeah, two, we yeah meanwhile, game. Kurt, Kurt yeah. Schilling instead spent that money on the literal Nazi memorabilia he has in his house. <laughs> like, uh, I, he literally collects Nazi shit. Um, yeah, nothing, I... Nothing abnormal about that. Nothing abnormal about that <laughs> at all. Just a totally, dude... Totally cool and totally fine. Totally thing. normal <laughs> person thing to do. Um, yeah, I... Personally, I can't wait because Kurt Schilling threw a big old fucking tantrum when he once again didn't make it into the Baseball Hall of Fame at Cooperstown this year and said, take my name off the ballot. I'm done dealing with this shit. And literally the Hall of Fame was like, no, fuck you. We're keeping it on until you're not eligible anymore. So next year, I believe I believe will be his last year of eligibility when he will once again not make it into Cooperstown. Got, well, see, the problem with that is he got a little too close uh, for, com- for my he comfort. He did get a little too yeah. close. But I don't know. Like you need you need seventy five percent of the Hall of Fame voters to vote for you, and he got like sixty six. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't think I don't. Votes. I don't think people are gonna change. That's too many votes next year. It is too many votes. Uh, the thing about baseball Hall of Fame voters is that a lot of these dudes are shitty old white dudes who haven't covered baseball in thirty years or so. Uh, I I would um, I would actually say the vast majority of baseball Hall of Fame voters are shitty old white men. So yeah, yeah. I have a lifetime pass to Cooperstown. Yeah. Um, I do. That's cool. That's what happens when you make a donation. Oh. So all I have to do is donate and then I'll go there maybe once more in my entire life. Or you could just come with me and I can finagle that too. Because I know how to pull strings. (laughs) (laughs) Um finally, uh, we're not talking about the Xbox uh games com thing that happened today, because apparently it wasn't very notable, but there was a I didn't even hear about it. 
uh exact to 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 your point yeah. um there was a pretty big uh gamescom presentation or gamescom pokemon presentation uh last week did you want to quickly run through sure. all that we're getting there's so. not a ton of new info um, a lot of stuff on the mobile end pokemon unite the moba uh is heading to mobile next month on september 22nd it will have crossplay with the switch version so that's pretty cool two new playable pokemon are coming to pokemon unite those being mamoswine and sylveon uh also on the mobile front uh, Pokemon Cafe Mix is getting remixed. Uh, so this is a touch-based puzzle game. Uh, I played a little bit, little bit of it when it came out, and I honestly enjoyed it. I thought it was really cute. Um, game will be getting new puzzle elements, additional Pokemon, and new dress-up options. Cute. Um, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, the uh, long-awaited, much-demanded Gen 4 remakes, which come out this November. Um, they, uh, they're, they're getting some updates. Um, so you're getting, uh, you're getting the ability to like change the appearance of your player character and stuff like that. And that's new. Um, they're also, they also focus on some of the mini games from the original, such as su the super contests, the, uh, underground and your secret base. Um, also, uh, in true Pokemon fashion, uh, a new custom, or well, a new designed uh, Nintendo Switch Lite console featuring Dialga and Palkia, the uh, mascots of Gen 4, will release along with the games in November. Uh, the big news was uh, a more extended look at Pokemon Legends Arceus or Pokemon of the Wild, which um, actually showed off more of how Pokemon battles are going to look. And it's definitely different than what we're used to in the classic turn-based format of the main series. Um, so when players begin, you will have a few different style options. Um, it's still turn-based, but you can either do a strong style or an agile style, which changes the statistics on specific moves uh, depending on situations, which means that in some cases you might be able to do a few turns like consecutively without your opponent doing something in, in turn. Um, so the, the changes are pretty cool. Also, notably, um, you, the player, can get absolutely fucked up by a wild Pokemon if you're not careful. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, it looks interesting. I think it looks pretty good. As usual, people are complaining about the graphics. I'm buying it day one. And uh, people who complain about graphics in Pokemon games can kiss my butt i'm just like i'm done i'm done with how entitled the pokemon why? community is why i don't know i think it looks fine um I'm, 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 it's like what are, are you expecting like a photorealistic like version of pokemon to come out at some point like did you i don't really enjoy I don't the detective know. pikachu movie and you're just like that that's what i yep, that's what i want no <laughs> it's fine um the other thing is uh we, we are once again we're seeing new variants of uh a new regional variants of pokemon um, so these include Hisuian Growlithe, which everyone's been obsessed with, a very fluffy Growlithe who actually looks kind of like um, uh, a foo dog. If you're familiar with those, those are like the sort of crouching lion statues that you see in a lot of um, like Chinese and Japanese architecture. Um, Hisuian Braviary. Um, and then we have two new regional exclusive evolutions. Um, one is Weird Deer, which is an evolution of Stantler. And then um, Basque Legion, which is uh, a new evolution of, uh, I think the Pokemon is just ba ba Basque. I'm going to look it up. Basculin. I was going to say Basculon. I was close. So yeah, Basculin now can evolve into Basque Legion. And the way that they described this evolution is horrifying because it's like, oh, when a basculin takes on enough of the spirits of its fallen comrades as it travels upstream, it turns into Basque Legion. And I'm like, that's horrible. I've I've discovered what that the fuck? Of, I, I've discovered there's a lot of actually quite dark, like there's a lot Pokemon, of dark shit. Like stories out there, mm -hmm. like about some of the Pokemon that are canon. I'm just like, okay, this is a kid's game, but all a right. A lot of the Pokedex entries, if you actually read through them, are um terrifying. <laughs> So, well, it's, I mean, like I said, when you've made like 1500 of them at this point, like, I guess, I guess you have to entertain yourself eventually. <laughs> <Yeah. so. laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus is still due to release in January. Neat. And I know when it does come out in January, exactly where you should go to purchase it. I guess you can go to densepixels.com slash Amazon. However, I would recommend that you actually order it from the Pokemon Center if you're going to pre-order a physical copy because they give you a free plush with it. And I don't think Amazon gives you a free plush. No, but they give us four cents. They do give us four cents on the dollar. So 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 you can go to... (laughs) You can go to densepixels.com slash Amazon for all of your capitalism needs. And um, we get a little bit of that. So you can feel slightly less bad about shopping with Amazon if you yeah. do it at densepixels.com slash Amazon. Um, but seriously, order if you're going to order a physical copy, <laughs> just do it through the Pokemon Center. They've got the best pre-order bonus. <laughs> Uh, we have a lot of post office questions this week. I'm going to jump around because that way, if Carrie doesn't want to stay for when we get to Wrestle Talk, she doesn't have to. Yeah, but, how? Because I'm trying to go to the gym. So let's. How about you save all the Wrestle Talk? I will because okay. there's a lot of Wrestle Talk. Um, okay. We'll start with Mark. So I'm going to go with Mark's second question first because Mark's second question is actually really funny for reasons that you guys don't know yet. So he said, "Is there any games that you wanted that you thought you wanted to try, but when you saw a trailer or gameplay, you were like, eh, meh." and pass it by i keep thinking i want to try the trying series everything about it just screams i'm okay not bad not great just okay and boring so it's hilarious that mark brought up the trying series specifically because i bought trying one on playstation back in the day and i began playing it and i was like this is quite mediocre and it's not the most fun game in the entire world and then the other day i was perusing the switch store And they had the Trine Collection, which is all four Trine games, on sale for $10. And I said to myself, I said, Self, maybe you didn't give Trine a chance back in the day. And you get four games for $10. And I bought the Trine Ultimate Collection. And then I started playing Trine 1. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. This game is just average as shit. Why did I spend ten dollars on the entire Trine series? Yeah, man, you these you got you got great instincts, Mark. Because <laughs> I I too looked at Trine and was like, oh wow, okay, you know, uh, maybe this will be kind of cool. And then I, I I bought it and it wasn't cool. It wasn't cool at all. It was it was it was it was fine. It just. But Mike, and uh, now I have four Trine games that I don't know what. <laughs> is the problem um Uh, i so i like so the the e-shop is a dangerous place (laughs) it's a dangerous place because they have a lot of fantastic sales for a lot of games that fit this bill exactly where you're just like man this looks cool so what i do with in the e-shop is if i see a game that's on sale i always wish list it and then if i don't know much about it i will seek out a review or two from varying different sources just to kind of get a sense for if I'm going to like the game or not. And like 70% of the games that I bookmark will then get kicked off the list. Um, I will buy a lot of them. And then the other ones, like I'll leave on the wish list for when it goes on like a stupid sale. And then I'll buy it when it goes on stupid sale. Like, like there are games that I want games that I will buy for the right price. And then games I'm like, eh, probably not going to be for me. I do that constantly on the switch more than any other platform. Yeah, there's some beat them up on the Switch. I think it's called like the takedown or something like that. And I was like, do I want to buy this? And I just, I did the same thing. I put it on my wish list. And, um, but every time I see it on sale, then I look at it and then I look at a, a trailer or a review and I'm just like, God, I really want to spend money, but I, but I, I just, I just can't. I think for me, like, I don't, I don't have a ton you know, I know what I like. I know what I don't like. Um, one that Donut County for me was one where like they announced it and like I, I saw some stuff and then like it came out and the reviews were sort of, eh, it's fine. Uh, and I waited until it was literally like on sale for a dollar. And I was like, all right, I'm going to play Donut County. And I played the whole thing in one go and it was worth a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I hear I hear it's an easy platinum as well. So I was I was thinking about seeing uh, I played it on, on sale on PlayStation. Steam, so. <laughs> um he also asked which game or series had the best twists. Uh obvious spoiler warning here. Um I mean for me, 
it's got Metal Gear series, right? Like they just mm. like the, like they just stop coming and they don't stop coming <laughs> <laughs> in, in Metal Gear. So yeah, yeah, one could argue that uh, twist bait and switch. I mean, who knows? <laughs> It's got a little bit of everything in it. Apparently, Kojima was said twelve minutes inspired him to maybe want to make it. Oh movie. God, that oh, is no. not. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, saw that. That is not. That does not speak well for twelve minutes. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Um, I'm old enough to remember when uh, when there was a twist that a lady oh, you were great. playing a lady the whole oh, yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, they tricked you. You're a feminist now. <laughs> um, Surprise. <laughs> um you know there's uh I'll, I'll always talk about spec ops the line mm -hmm. which uh is an entertaining game uh then you got stuff like bioshock that everybody says right like and i don't know if bioshock is 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 more of a, a twist it's a twist but it's like oh damn like but it, it's a twist that could kind of theoretically be applied to any game mm-hmm you know what I mean? So I don't know how effective the actual twist is, it, but, um, but yeah, there's that. There's, um, there's a ton of games that have like twists. I don't know. Uh, now he's saying the best ones. I don't know what like the best ones are. Mm. Cause like that heavy rain has a twist ending. <laughs> twist ending. <laughs> it certainly does. Yeah. Which I, like I'm trying dumb. to think of twists. Like I remember playing fallout four and being, just being like oh your your kid grew up without you and now he's leading the institute and i'm just like okay yeah like, like is that a twist <laughs> like, like, like I, I i don't know i don't um, know yeah um yeah and then, and then i guess i guess what defines a twist versus just a shocking story moment you know what i mean like uh, like, like is is there a difference between the two or are they the same thing so uh i think um Wheatley fucking betraying you and yeah too that's a that's a pretty good one yeah um, uh you finding out that you're the uh in braid you're the you're the you're the villain the, you're, you're the, the incel yeah, yeah. <laughs> surprise it's like the opposite of metroid rather than surprise you're a feminist <laughs> it's surprise you're an incel <laughs> uh, in, inside had a pretty interesting and also insane fucking twist as well uh where you just uh, again spoilers for that you, you just became part of the fucking amorphous blob that then escapes from this weird like <laughs> dystopian government facility you know what i'm gonna say the the darth revan reveal in kotor yeah. that's it yeah that's that's up there yeah i remember playing it you know unsullied and it uh it and i was just like oh shit <laughs> Cause I was playing good, right? I was playing light side and then, uh, you know, oh, well, I was always supposed to be a bad guy. So I'll just be a bad guy now. Like, <laughs> no, doesn't, like, that, that doesn't, that doesn't, you know, but, uh, yeah, Darth Revan, I'll yep. give you that. Uh, if I, if I can indulge, actually, no, I'll wait. To, I will, I will throw another video. So we'll <laughs> talk about soccer. Um, Casa asks, have any of you guys encountered a game that you feel adequately approaches a difficult subject matter? No, not I adequately. Haven't. No, I've played a lot of games that handle it very poorly. Yeah. Like, like maybe life is strange might be the closest one to me. And that's, that's, you know, they, it, it doesn't tackle the subjects specifically. Like, so certain characters have like issues that they need to kind of work through in the narrative, but mm -hmm. nothing that was like the focus of the game, right? Like, yeah, the, I haven't played that. That was that cancer game. I haven't played that. Oh, that dragon yeah. cancer. Yeah. But I, I think um, the problem the video games have, especially like when they're done by big studios, is that if you're going to make touchy subject matter like a central focal point of the game then you have to be able to tell a good story around it that has to last for like eight to 10 hours, which is really hard to do. And then if you just make it like a one-off thing in the game, then it doesn't feel like that you're giving it adequate 
right. space or representation. So like it's it's a it's a it's a tough line to walk. Um, I've never played Senua's Sacrifice, but I I hear that that's I hear that's one there. of the better yeah. handles of mental illness. Um, Guys, I there's a there's a glaring one that we're all forgetting, and it's called Six Days in Fallujah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like a- they mastered it. They 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 towed that line <laughs> deftly. We think because the game is. Has- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have no idea, guys. I, I yeah, yeah it, it's it's a hard thing to do, and and again, like there are very like like just figure how many like bad like screenwriters exist out there that get their movies made, and like just realize that like the game industry has the same like ratio of shit writers that mm-hmm. you know get stuff made. So some people just don't have the skill to handle that stuff deftly. So. Uh, Cam asks, uh, Carrie, how do we feel about Arceus? Does it look like it'll be the direction moving forward of the mainline games? Do you think this is the first mm. step eventual overhaul? I don't know. Um, I feel good about Arceus. I think it's going to be a good game. I think it's going to be fun. I don't know if this is going to be the direction of the mainline games moving forward. I feel like you're still going to have the sort of main line of Pokemon games all still in that true turn-based format. Um, but I, I mean, obviously depending on how well Arceus is received and how well it does financially, I think it's going to do gangbusters because it's a fucking open world Pokemon game. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. They keep putting out Pokemon games. I'm going to keep buying them. That's, that's what I know. Uh, Daniel asks, do you guys have any opinions on how to stop hate raids on Twitch or are we never going to have nice things? Well, one, if Twitch actually gave a shit, that would be a good first start. It would be um, a great first start. The problem is, is, is that Ray, so like if raids are going to exist, how do you stop someone from raiding to grieve somebody? It's, it's a hard thing to fucking police. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like it's not like, you know, before the rage starts, you're just like, hey, do you actually hate this person? Oh, you do? Well, then eh, maybe not so much. Like, I, I think th- part of it is, yeah. you know, people are creating all sorts of fake accounts and bots and whatnot. And um, I mean, I feel like baseline would be Twitch to have two-factor authentication to even so much as create an account with them, which I don't think they have. Uh, the, um, it, it, ex- it's, it exists, but it's optional. Yeah, it's optional. It shouldn't yeah. be optional. You should be able, like they should actually have you verify your identity um before you have an account on twitch yeah yeah and and again it, it comes to like like the way you stop that from happening is by delivering is delivering actual appreciable substantial consequences and substantial consequences on twitch is you'd have to ip ban somebody like yeah. it's not just enough to ban the account you have to ip ban them yeah um, so I don't use Twitch. Uh, yeah. I'm presuming that a Twitch raid is like a flash mob on a channel. Yeah. So basically, basically. So yeah. So let's say I'm streaming and my stream is coming to an end, but I see that Carrie's on. Basically, I can be like, "Oh, let's go raid Carrie's stream," and and I can essentially send all of my viewers to str- to the Carrie stream. So like, yeah, like as, if I'm ending is. my stream, I can just send all of my people and then they can stay and watch Carrie or they can leave like whatever they want to do. But basically it gives Carrie like a huge jump up in how many people are watching her stream and could potentially keep people on um, watching her stream. The problem is that you can obviously see where this can go catastrophically wrong is yeah. they say, you know, here's this guy that I hate or here's this like minority that we can go over there and like call the N-word like crazy and that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's the thing that's happening. I frankly, I'm shocked it took as many months as it did before people realized that was a thing they could do. Mm-hmm. To be quite frank, and I, I, I guess the only other thing you could do is you could just make it so that, like, the person getting raided has to like approve it, or like you have to be friends with them. Like you, like you can create other. Sure, there are things yeah. you can do. I mean, I think even then, I think if you're streaming, you can basically only approve from people who like you mutually follow and stuff like that but like yeah. even outside of that like it, sh- it shouldn't be up to the it shouldn't users to, it, to no it shouldn't be up to the users yeah. it should be on twitch and twitch isn't doing enough period so uh b Blizz, uh has an interesting question it's a long one but it's worth it uh make a long story short even though i was born in the 80s i never touched the original final fantasy 7 the only reason i ever heard the fanfare 
was back when Xavier Woods would play on the trombone. The only wow. reason I played remake for the first time last year was after Sephiroth was added to Smash Brothers. Wow. I had no idea who he was, but his Smash trailer was dope as fuck. How the fuck do you play video games and not know who Sephiroth is? Well, that, that's what I found amazing about this. Like, like I like I applaud Beeblis for somehow avoiding yeah. the Zeitgeist. <laughs> right, I'm right. right. avoiding for Sephiroth all this time. Um, so remake was fun. I ran through the story in roughly a week. My question is, should I go back and play the original Final Fantasy VII at this point, or should I just continue playing the Final Fantasy VII remakes since they have all the timey-wimey stuff like Tifa in a cowboy outfit whenever they come out without being spoiled? I would recommend that you play the original. And I say that because I feel like the way the remake is being handled, certain things will be better appreciated if you've already played through the original. Yeah. I, and I, I agree. Like, if you like Final Fantasy VII Remake, you will really like Final Fantasy VII. Oh, right. Like, yeah. like, you really will. And as Carrie said, they are the, the, the funny thing about Remake, and I don't know why we didn't see this coming a mile away. I feel it, like an idiot in retrospect for not seeing it coming, is they are counting on most of the people who played who are playing ff7 remake to have played the original final fantasy yeah 7 because they are writing the story with your knowledge of events from final fantasy 7 in mind so that when things go a little bit differently it'll yeah. feel like a surprise it'll feel yeah, really when things fresh. go a lot a bit different <laughs> it'll feel yeah. like a surprise and that's yeah. the that's the thing that i really appreciate about that remake man like I know purists would be like, I just want to Final Fantasy VII the way it was. But then you can go back graphics. and you can pay $12 right. and you can play the original. Right. I Yeah, I recommend going back and playing. Look, we give Final Fantasy VII a lot of, a lot of crap. A lot of but, deserved shit for being but very it's overrated. Still, but it's still a really good game. It It is. And and it's it's a game that like has affected people, right? Like it's a game that... that has caused people to play role-playing games. So uh, no one's denying the impact that Final Fantasy VII has had. And if you have never played it, I think you should. There are uh, w there are a ton of interesting characters not named Cloud that you can <laughs> that you will be able to relate to. Um, yeah, it just you know it just costs like twenty dollars. Like, don't play it on a phone. No. First and foremost, don't play it on a phone. Go on Steam or go on the PlayStation Store and pay the 12 right. or $15. I'm literally looking at the store page for Final Fantasy VII now, and it's $11.99 on Steam. And that's full oh, yeah. retail price. So you know it's going to go on sale, and it'll be like 4 bucks. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I would say it's worth, it's worth checking out. Um, the first of many Johnny questions comes, uh, how far can y'all get on the milk crate challenge hashtag? Cool. I ain't doing that. The, the milk uh, crate challenge seems like a modern, like, like a more modern interpretation of like the game that you play at the carnival where you have to like go up the ladder that's only bound at like two points on one end of the other. And so it like flips around and crazy, like it looks easy. But it, but it's very it's deceptively difficult because of the instability that the milk crate structure yeah uh, has tight. except unlike doing the ropes where you fall and you land on a inflated cushy surface that would be very difficult to harm yourself on if you fall on the milk crate challenge you die <laughs> <laughs> yeah my uh you know I'm 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 relatively tall um and my center of gravity is way too high, uh, being that the center of gravity is in my head because it's so fucking big uh, <laughs> that I cannot do like balance stuff. Uh, I will topple over. I can I can get to about the second milk crate, and then I'm like, okay, I need to get down. Oh, I can, I could get to the fifth or sixth milk milk crate. I think the 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 fifth or sixth step in the tower. How many is it? Like seven or eight? I think eight is the peak. Okay, I could, I could get to five or six before things started to get hairy. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no. I, I do it. I'm, I'm like a fucking giraffe. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> like a newborn baby deer just out yeah, here. Man. Nothing can't but do legs. It. Can't so do it. The last, uh, the last question before we get into SummerSlam talk is from Leonardo who says, oh my God, the Spider-Man trailer. Yo, Spider-Man. Yo, real quick, because I'm not going to be on Nerdpocalypse. I'm so fucking excited for the Spider-Man movie. <laughs> I can't uh, tell you. 
um, how excited I am for this thing. Like I, mm, okay. I he, he, asks, he asks the hard hitting question that we really do need to answer for this trailer. Which of today's wrestlers would you cast to play bone saw uh, in no way home? Uh, he, he suggested Bray Wyatt could be bone saw. Hmm. Okay. I could, uh, I could, I could see that. And I think he would have a, I think he would have a, a, a fun time with it. When I hear the name Bonesaw McGraw, I, you know, I think of one of them good old boy Southern wrestlers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's gotta be uh, it. Like I could have, the problem is like, I don't, I don't really know too many, like, like someone with AJ Styles' voice, but like with a, but with like a, a huge build, you know what I mean? Mm. I don't know if I could, um, I don't, I don't know if I could, I could think of one off the top of my head, but, but yeah, one of them, one of them good old boys, Southern wrestlers, wrestlers, wrestlers. Yeah. Uh, cool. Before I bounce and you guys turn this into a wrestling podcast, uh, Real quick to to answer B Blizz's uh, second question, which is what non Mass Effect Golden Sun game? Would oh, we've, you go we've, back? Answered, we've answered this. I know. I I I thinking thinking about twists. I would say right now, uh, Final Fantasy VI, because I think the part where Kafka actually destroys the world would be super fun to uh, replay. Yeah. Uh, fresh. Uh, cool. Thanks. That's it for me. Uh, yeah. You should go online. You should like my band. Quick save. Um, we're playing a couple shows next month, so you should check that out. Uh, we're playing this gaming gaming con called Good Game Fest, and uh, that's ggfest.org. We're doing three sets on Saturday, September 25th. We're going to play some good tunes. Um, also, I'm doing Extra Life this year, so you should donate to that. I want to play New Vegas. We're going to have a really rowdy time. So uh, thanks, boys. Enjoy your wrestling. I should yeah. actually be on more often because uh, my band practice is no longer every other Tuesday. So fantastic. I'll see you next week. See ya. All right. So before we get into uh, the wrestle talk, uh, Micah, you watched your first Chelsea football game this week. Yes. Yes. Um, look, I enjoyed it. Um, like, here's the thing that I that I really enjoy, and I think you talked about uh, a, a lot of this last week. Mm. The game moves, it does. right? Like when if if you don't know what you're looking at, you know, you think you're just seeing people kick a ball. Like no, like the game moves. There's no like starting and stopping like there is in American football. There's no uh, 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 you know ad breaks every every five to ten minutes. Um, there's always like, there's always something going on, which, uh, which I appreciate. And, and I, I really like second, you're in and out, you're in and out. It's not a, it's, it's not a, it, it's not an, it's not a whole afternoon commitment. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, like I was on vacation. Uh, I went to ocean city and I said, Oh, well, uh, the, you know, the, the Chelsea match is on and we watched it. And I was, and then, all right, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go out and enjoy the beach or whatever, right? Like, it was, it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, you, picked, you picked a good one too, because Chelsea whooped up on Arsenal. So, like, yeah, man. So like, what, what you don't know is that they. So there, there's a comment. There's a uh, pundit that I follow who created. He basically invented a stat that gets used now a lot in soccer called expected goals, where he basically looks at all of the shots that were taken. And the situations that they were taken in and he can essentially estimate how many goals a team should have scored based on their shot quality that they took throughout the game and the expected goals for that match chelsea won two nil uh they beat arsenal and expected goals three to to 0.5 so that that just kind of shows you like how dominant chelsea was uh in that match that arsenal did not have really any good scoring opportunities in that entire game which again pleased me because they were playing at arsenal's playing at home uh got booed by their fans which is always fun uh, <laughs> and, is, and is generally terrible which is a tottenham supporter uh is great now uh, you know the game is very uh free form i yeah. think yes uh, you know i'm not seeing like um traditional like like plays like we're like we're setting up screens and so and, and where stuff like that where you see the most plays uh is in literally what 
are called set plays. So like corner kicks, free kicks, like stuff like that is where you actually see designed plays happening. Mm -hmm. Um, And then they have, while they don't have like specific plays that they do during open play, um, there is a general flow to how certain players are playing. So like, you'll see like certain wingers will stay wide. Certain wingers will always try to cut in um, like, like attacking midfielders like do they get in the box or do they try to you know move the ball you know feed play to the striker you know is a team just like hoofing it in a lot and like trying to get it on the striker's head or are they moving it through the middle of the field like that's that's kind of how plays work in soccer but but there's no like like there's a captain right but there's no like like gent like like pitch general like like a point guard is for basketball there's not a quarterback quarterback or or anything like that no it's it's generally everyone has a role that they're playing and it's interesting because like they do switch tactics as the match goes along getting that message to the players is difficult usually you'll see it's the manager like screaming at them from the touchline or or like when a substitute comes on like you'll see them immediately run to a couple guys and he's like hey we're doing this now kind of thing um but no it's not nearly as organized as like american football or basketball or things of that sort so so the the only reason I knew how sports work is because of video games where I would have to sim video games. Uh, you know, I would play Madden or whatever. I would, that's how I would learn how plays work. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I downloaded uh, FIFA 21 mm-hmm. to my, my Xbox. So I'm going to give that a shot cool. uh, and see, and, and see if I can get a feel for more of the game uh, that way. Yeah, the thing uh, the, the thing that FIFA is really good at um, is in the like pre-match ways you can set your team because you can basically like adjust your team's tactics before the match starts and basically seeing like the different formations that clubs can line up in and seeing how seeing how pressure across the pitch can be tweaked is will teach you the most about like tactical soccer mm-hmm. that FIFA can provide you and then like playing FIFA will just teach you like how the ball moves around the field. Like you'll learn what a through ball is, you know, and, and why it's important and why it's, you know, an effective way to, to, to create chances and things like that. So okay, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And like I said, my phone is always open to text me questions. Yeah. I, yeah. I, t- I asked Brad a question. Cause I was like, wait a minute, like Chelsea's winning two nil, but they, but they're past 90 minutes. Yeah. Well, what the hell is going on? It's, and, it's, uh, it's my favorite dumb rule in soccer is the arbitrary like like literally one person in the entire stadium knows when the game is going to end and it's the dude that has the whistle and, and, every, and everyone else is just guessing the, the best information that we have at the time it's, it's great too because like when you like when the, when a home team is losing and the the fourth referee holds up the board that shows how many extra minutes they're adding and when it's a low amount like you'll hear everyone groan in the stadium <laughs> vice versa if they're winning and the referee puts up like seven minutes it's like oh my god like, and then like once it gets to time you'll hear the crowd start to like whistle like like they'll whistle at the referee to be like blow the fucking whistle like <laughs> it's it's a it's stupid but it's also one of the unique things about soccer that's incredibly fun um so more than that because gustavo asked you like how does it feel knowing that the teams that he and you root for are in the champions league and tottenham is in the newly created euro uh european conference league uh this season because of how they finished last year okay now i am uh i remember you said that the champions league is like a separate tournament more more to come on that We'll, we'll save that for later in the season because it'll it'll become more relevant later so we're not we we won't worry about that right now okay (laughs) um so into the wrestle talk we're not going to do a full recap of SummerSlam because quite frankly i don't really want to it's not Uh, worth it (laughs) it it was it was kind of lame um and takeover was also like mediocre as well like like it was it was solid as takeovers always are but it just it like all the matches felt anticlimactic yeah a little bit like even the cage like the the two out of three falls match between uh ko and 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 adam cole uh felt a little anticlimactic um so we'll start with johnny johnny says if adam cole leaves for AEW, should we spin this as the guy was scared and he knew that he wouldn't cut it on the main roster be honest um no i don't think that's how it should be spun because adam cole has eyes and ears 
and he can see how NXT guys have been booked that yeah, have come man. up throughout the years. And Adam Cole can also look in the mirror and see that he's like 5'9 and weighs 210 pounds. Right. Like, and, they, wasn't there a mandate saying that, like, like, oh, all right, well, guess what? NXT is going to be like, we got to get some more, we got to get some more beef in here. We got to get the, yeah. we got to get some more big people in here. And he's not, he, he doesn't look like a superstar. Right. Like, so like you have, you have like the only very few small guys compa- comparatively, not, not as a raw number, but, but comparatively very few small guys have been super successful in WWE over the years. Um, and Adam Cole has all the qualities to be, to be that successful, but he has to be given opportunities by the people running the show. And I don't necessarily like, like you can't say for sure that that's going to happen. Right. Like based on right. track record alone, like if he does leave, I'm not going to blame him at all. Um, I'm a little worried because they, so they filmed two weeks worth of takeovers today. Um, he was not at any of them. Kyle Riley was, or at least he didn't appear on screen. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, but I'm not, I'm not bullish on him staying if I'm being honest, which sucks. Cause I would like him to, um rev asks bill goldberg should quit while he's ahead right i wouldn't argue that bill goldberg he's not ahead (laughs) Um, not be besides looking way past his prime the dude nearly injured bobby lashley's neck as he threw him off the top ropes uh bret hart's somewhere like i told y'all he's as fast (laughs) yeah no goldberg goldberg oh my god it's so frustrating like he had the like he should have left after wrestlemania 33 like he came back as Survivor Series that year where he beat Brock Lesnar in 30 seconds, which was amazing, threw Brock Lesnar out of the Royal Rumble and then did the job to Brock Lesnar for the title at WrestleMania in a match that wasn't terrible. Like that, like that should have been, that should have been Goldberg Swan song. Like that should have been it. Right. He should have um, been. It. You know, WWE's reliance on nostalgia is, um, nostalgia acts. God damn it. It, it, it hurts the company, man. Like, and I know you gotta. I I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the thought process is, but you're never gonna make new stars relying on these old people. And look, Bobby Lashley. Look, I I, I like this this character that Bobby Lashley has has uh, created for himself. But Bobby Lashley, he's what in his mid forties. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I just don't. I don't know. I just don't understand what the what the issue is. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a couple of different things involving WWE and Bobby Lashley and who gets booked where that are just like, well, let's, uh, I mean, we can, we can kind of touch on that with John's question. Uh, he, so he was on a long rant. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but basically the, the Becky Bianca situation. All so, right. <laughs> so before we get into it, reportedly, according to the dirt sheets, Becky Lynch wanted to come back as a heel like that, that apparently that's something that she wanted to do. So knowing this, if you are going to book her as a heel, you want to shock people and you want to set the ground lines for a story of Bianca Belair being, you know, the baby face to overcome, then this is a good starting point for that story because you have essentially done the Daniel Bryan thing where Daniel Bryan you know won the title from John Cena at SummerSlam and then immediately got cashed in on because Triple H turned on him and Randy Orton became the champion which culminated in you know Daniel Bryan WrestleMania if that's your long-term plan if you're going to have Becky beat Bianca Belair in 15 seconds she's going to be a a bitch and Bianca Belair is going to rematch her and lose that and be down in the dumps and have to build herself back up again to the eventual like WrestleMania showdown where she overcomes, then you're at a good point. You're at a good starting point. However, it's WWE and long-term storytelling is not always their forte. So I don't think you can just go to this situation and say, Oh, like this is their plan. I don't think you can say that. And plus you have the other factor of it is this is CM Punk weekend. And it feels, 
I'm, I don't know that it was reactionary, but it feels reactionary. It feels reactionary, but she had like a, she had like a, well, yeah, I, I guess everyone, everyone knew CM Punk was coming back. Yeah. Right? So she could have, they could have had those uh, lame ass shirts made. Look, Full disclosure, I am not a Becky Lynch fan. I, I think her character is incredibly annoying. I, her character reminds me of Conor McGregor in all the worst ways. <laughs> so I'm not a Becky Lynch uh, fan. You ethnic. Uh, <laughs> um, the, I wouldn't, I understand, you know, I understand what's going on here. And I understand what you're saying. Um, if you wanted to come back as a heel, you need to do some heel shit. And like, I mean, that was, that was kind of heelish what she did. Uh, I mean, kind of, but no, not really. Right. Yeah. Like not really. And, and Bianca Belair has this problem and this is a WWE problem. Uh, you are way too nice and way too forthcoming with praise for your opponent. Yeah. And, and that is a WWE thing. And I, I, I hate it. I hate it. Like I understand Bianca Belair is like, you know, she's the she's the 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 dark meat white meat baby face. And and uh she is supposed to, you know, she's she's what they wanted uh Bailey to be when she was like the hugger, right? Mm -hmm. And and I get it, right? But WWE baby faces are dumb. Not from like, oh, I don't like this. This is dumb. No, like they they their they, characters they, they, do, they do stupid things to right. end the story yeah. right they do really stupid things that don't make sense and the best baby faces are people like daniel bryan who aren't just smiling assholes right who like who get impassioned about something you could be a face and not take shit from people and that was, that was steve austin ultimately at the end of the day right right <laughs> So, you know, I, I am disappointed in that I, you know, card subject to change and all that. I get it. But like, I'm yeah, disappointed that, with the honestly, Sasha like, Banks that's thing. The, that's the bigger squashing aside that that's the bigger issue with SummerSlam is that they advertise Sasha Banks to right before, like literally leading into the match happening. They ran the video package. <laughs> And then, like, Bianca Belair comes out, and they're like, oh, by the way, ha, 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 Sasha Banks isn't here tonight. Yeah, like, like, I, feel like, I feel like you could have addressed the Sasha Banks thing in the pre-show, maybe even done, like, a, I don't know, like, a fucking battle royale or something. Like, you could have done, you could have addressed this in some way, shape, or form. Like, or, and you could have been like, oh, like, we'll have an opponent for, you know, Bianca Belair tonight. And then you still could have done the Carmella swerve. Like, that would have been fine. Right. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like, and it actually would have been more relevant in that particular case, because then if you, if they're like, Oh, mystery opponent, then people will be like, Oh, it's Becky Lynch. And then if you, then if it's Carmella, then, you know, then, then it's a true swerve. Um, that was the bigger problem that they did advert. They, they use that match. They advertised the match right up until, and I guess, and again, I guess they're baking that in for Bianca Belair to be like, Oh, she, she literally thought, you know, up until, that very moment that she was going to be wrestling Sasha Banks, she was totally unprepared, you know, that kind of thing. I but. get it. I even get, I even get the squash, right? I even get the squash. But if you, if you, if you were trying to tell a certain story uh, and time will tell, we'll see on Friday. Um, but, but not one, not one like even Kofi had one move of offense, right? Like, <laughs> like I find it is incredibly hard for me to, I don't, to buy. I don't think that the Kofi situation is as comparable. I I, I totally it, understand where people are coming from with it, and I I get it. I get it. I really don't think that's what this is. I I, I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. That's why I'm not like flying off the handle yet. But it is very difficult for me to believe that Bianca Belair, mm -hmm. who has shown incredible feats of strength right. throughout her entire WWE career, gets, gets shellacked by a, a, a whack rock bottom <laughs> and, 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 a, and, a, and a fake shan, a handshake and a, and, a, and a lame fake rock bottom. And it just, I don't know, man. Like I, I, 
I would have liked to have seen even a like I would have loved to have seen Becky cheat to win. Yeah. Like, like it doesn't even have to be a long match because you you know you got to sell that match, right? You got to build to that match. Yeah. But like cheat to win. Like don't give me like a don't give me like a handshake or whatever. Like have her have the two of them agree and then uh Bianca turns around and you know to give the ref her belt or something like that. Have have Becky Lynch pull out a shillelagh or whatever Irish people use to cheat with, <laughs> right? Hit her in the back of the head, or, or have her like yank her by her by her hair and do the the, the, the cheap ass roll up. What we're, like, we're really finding out from this discussion is that Micah is like <laughs> just absolutely like anti Irish as much as possible. I, I'm not anti Irish. I'm anti Becky. I'm anti <laughs> Becky and I'm anti Connor. I can't, I can't stand the two of them. I can't stand them. I can't stand this little exaggerated walk that they do. I they hate, it. Trying, I hate what, it. What are you, you going to tell me next? To look, oh, I, I, I love Irish people. Like, Finn Finley was one of my favorite WCW wrestlers. Like, <laughs> Shea, I, some of my best friends are named Seamus. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a time will tell thing. I, I can understand why black wrestling fans would feel hard done, especially like just a couple of years after the whole Kofi Kingston situation where they literally just dimed him to get to a shitty fucking blood, you know, blood feud match right. with Kane Velasquez. You know what I mean? Like right. get the fuck out of here. now that being said, I, I also think it's somewhat unfair to look at those two specific examples. And again, you can feel agreed by them, but then to also ignore all of the other much better ways that WWE has been representing black athletes over the past several years. Like I think that they've done a fairly, especially given their fucking history, they've done a fairly good job yeah, of, yeah. of really making black wrestlers look much better. I mean, the new them. day is a testament to it, right? Like, I mean, the new day, the street profits, like say what you will about Apollo Cruz's like silly, like switch to the Nigerian gimmick, but the dude was intercontinental <laughs> champion for several months. <laughs> Lashley fucking being a badass on, you know, on raw for as, as long as he's been and that kind of stuff. So like, I think they're, I think they're doing a better job. But. Yeah. This isn't, uh, I agree with you. This isn't, this isn't Kofi, right? This isn't, yeah. you know, Kofi brought, but at the same time, you know, it, it's, it's you know it's you're gun shy yeah you know what i mean you're I gun it. shy i get and it. and and i'm look but they did their job because i'm very interested in in to see how this plays out on friday um but again yeah. you know if you you want becky to be a heel but like uh, you know you gotta she's gotta do some real heel shit she does. And she's going to have to, to get the crowd to turn against her because, because yep. they, they want to cheer for her. Now, that being said, there have been a couple guys that they have, I, I've thought for sure in recent history, like how the fuck can they possibly make this guy heal? And they, and, and the characters have been good enough to pull it off. Like Johnny Gargano is one of those guys that like, I don't like, like I, I look at Johnny Gargano. I was like, how would they ever turn this guy heel? Because the, the, the fucking crowd wants to cheer for him, but Johnny Gargano pulled it off. Like, like, yeah. like he was able to, to become an effective heel in NXT. So um, it can be done. Uh, it's, it's relying on the performer to do it. Um, so she has to be a shit bag. I, I would agree. So hopefully she will be. Uh, speaking of being interested on how things are going to shake out on Friday, we have to, we're going to end it here. Uh, we, we can't, we can't not talk about Rampage, the first AEW show that I've watched to completion. <laughs> I was curious. Uh, of course, of I was course. Um, you know, it, it. I don't. Um, I don't have the the love for CM Punk that apparently um uh, the uh that one dude who was openly weeping does. Um, and I'm not knocking that dude, right? Like we all have our heroes or whatever, mm -hmm. but I I do respect CM Punk and what he represents. Um, the cult of personality. That theme song is just, I've never has a song been more perfect for someone uh, than it has been for him. Mm -hmm. And um, I, but I did enjoy it. I, that guy has, that guy oozes charisma. 
and I uh, I enjoyed seeing, I enjoyed hearing him. Yeah. Um, it will be interesting to see how he does in the ring. Yeah, I'm really after, after curious. A super long layoff. Um, I was surprised. Like I, he seems like the type of guy to pick low hanging fruit. And though he definitely took some veiled shots at WWE, they weren't directed at WWE. Like, like he alluded to some things that everyone knew what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but he wasn't like, ah, oh, Vince McMahon sucks. Like, like it was like it wasn't that. And I, I it wasn't I, what I, Cody does, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, and I and I expected that. And again, we still have lots of time to go, so I'm sure we're going to see it here and there. Um, but for a return promo, I thought it was pretty good um the reaction was very cool i do find it interesting I'm just gonna say i do find it interesting for a guy that fucking hates wwe and is regretful of some of the time he spent in wwe boy he sure is leaning on a lot of things that made him popular in wwe and i'm sure that he's going to say that it was him that create that made these those parts of his character but in the words of triple h uh back on tv many many years ago uh who do you think licensed living color to get called a personality like it wasn't you like you asked us to do something you did who do you think made all those cm punk ice cream bars like back in the day is it uh is it now i i you know you you indie wrestling wrestling fans listening um you'll have to you'll have to let us know but i thought cult of personality was something that he always came no. to the ring with no not no that 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 was a that was a post summer punk thing that was part of his uh that was part of his that was part of his uh his his stick wow okay and again right. like he's got the same logos he yeah, I, I thought all of that. I thought, <laughs> I thought all of that was him, right? Because if it wasn't, you better be damn sure that that WWE wouldn't let him use the 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 Wakanda forever. Yeah, but I'm, I'm I'm saying is that like it's not like they didn't have a hand in. You know what I mean? Like it's not like he didn't collaborate with WWE. You know, fucking merchandise designers to create that logo and to create that look and stuff like that. I'm not saying they own it, and I'm sure it's different enough that they can't be sued for it right but he is taking stuff that was part of his run that made him known for wwe okay. for someone that bitches and moans about you know the seven years he spent in wwe it's all okay i i thought i thought all that stuff was like i thought yeah. all that stuff was no, no. him you know what i mean no, no. like like the i like i thought he crafted this whole like you know, with the name and and all that you know what i mean well, I, and, I thought and all that to, was to your point it. if it was him doesn't that undermine a lot of the shit that he fucking likes to bitch about? Like the fact that he had to do things this way and this, like it seems, it sure seems like the WWE is a guy that gave him a lot of creative freedom. I, I at a think time where a lot of guys, a lot, a lot of guys did not have that creative freedom. At the risk of sounding like a CM Punk shill, I think that, uh, you know, it, at least I hope, I hope that, that like, t-shirt like design like I, I i feel like the athletes have a much more of a say than well they have input but it's not it's not like they're making the decision single-handedly sure but like there are wildly different types of shirts yeah for big name stars right like john cena came back with a super mario brothers three great fucking t-shirt shirt. i i like that shirt yeah. right the guy he was facing the champ has a black shirt with white letters on it. <laughs> like that's it. Right? Like uh, his, I, I don't like I don't his... know if you know I don't know if you know that Micah. There's there's a guy who had a, a pretty successful guy in the wrestling business who had a black shirt with white lettering on it. I mean, but sold, like sold quite a few of those. Uh, but I like at the same time, right? Like they're just like the whack ass like like acknowledge me. Like 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 and like right hand man. Who's buying a shirt that says right hand man on it? <laughs> I'm buying a sidekick shirt, right? Like I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I, yeah. I'm going off on a tangent, but look, yeah. uh, CM Punk coming back, 
I I enjoy I enjoy big wrestling pops, big wrestling moments, and when people like if if someone is invested in something like that, it's so it's it makes yeah. me feel good to see, and I and I really enjoyed it, and and here's the thing with AEW, they've been doing that a lot. Yeah, eventually that's not going to work anymore. Well, and that, and that's the thing, like, I'm sure like, like Friday was huge. This Wednesday is gonna be pretty huge. Like he's still going to pop some ratings. The first mat, like, I'm sure they're going to have a uptick in their buys for all out when he wrestles, like see what happens when the novelty wears off, like see where we're at once the, once the newness and once, you know, the sheen is off a little bit and see how it persists. Like everyone was touting that rating. And everyone was like sharing the like the YouTube uh, like oh look at the YouTube views look at the YouTube views, okay well WWE had a video that went up of fucking Brock Lesnar coming back that got four million views on TikTok so like yeah, it's not, like can't. it's not like it's like come on like yeah, it's not you like really... you know it's, yeah it, it's it's it, it, yes it's impressive yes you pop the rating but this is a long game it's not you know you didn't just because you want a weekend doesn't mean that. Yeah, you can't, you can't, like, you can't rely on, uh, again, like, he's a, he's a nostalgia act, right? Like, you can't necessarily rely on that. And I'm not saying AEW does. They, they have a lot of, like, really good young talent. And when Daniel Bryan, when Bryan Danielson eventually gets there, there's going to be, there's going to be that, like, moment again. But how many of those do they have, right? Like, how many of those bullets are in that chamber? Um, I know. You know, you, you got to. And look, I like AEW. I I think it's I think it's a it's a fine alternative. Um, a little too much uh, cursing, which you know WWE tried to implement, tried to copy a bit, and it sounds even worse. That's oh yeah, like all right, all right, all right, all right, Bill, <laughs> shut up, shut up. I don't give that man a microphone. <laughs> please, please, God. If, any, if, any, if, any, if anyone ever did Paul Heyman. <laughs> god damn but yeah it was it was a pretty like i said it, it's unfortunate because oftentimes SummerSlam can in many cases be better than wrestlemania so i was a little bit let down this weekend um even like like cena roman reigns was a very good match um they had an edge you know seth rollins is a very good match but it just the whole weekend just kind of felt a little hollow um in general which is sad because you, you never like to see that yeah. um match the weekend for you before we get out of here oh all, man all, all weekend because i know what mine uh, is. i don't um i don't know like i said i was on vacation so i was okay. only half paying attention to most of it i do remember enjoying edge and seth rollins uh and, for uh, me it's it's the it's if you watch one match from this weekend go watch the uh Walter uh Ilya dragon oh match. i saw the tail end of that jesus gonna see christ two, two dudes beating the shit out of each other like that i have not seen a stiff ass match like that on wwe programming in literally uh 25 years yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i saw that, the tail end of it yeah, that was that was a good one um <laughs> and then this the second one i'd say would be the reigns john cena match i thought that they told a good story in that match, so. yeah so cool all right well we're getting out of here uh again densepixels.com slash fans for the discord subscribe where you get your podcast subscribe on youtube go to twitch then fixes brad apparition 410 for terrence and then carry us up to carry thanks for watching and listening we'll see you all the next time see you you're watching the Dense Pixels YouTube channel? Click the subscribe button while you're here and make sure you check out our weekly podcast where we discuss the latest gaming news and our impressions on what games we've been playing.